Rubber gloves. Your best friend in gardening, washing the dishes, and not getting your hands dirty. We snap them on whenever we have to clean a mess. But do you even know how they're made? Not many people do. So, in today's video, let's talk about all these trusty tools and how they're manufactured in a factory. But first, where did rubber gloves come from? Now, the reason why this story is important is unique. It's a story of love. Yup, surgical rubber gloves made their debut over a century ago at Johns Hopkins Hospital, but the invention is more about love than hygiene. The man behind this groundbreaking innovation was Dr. William Stewart Halstead. At the time, he was a big name in American medicine. He was famous for his exceptional surgical skills and pioneering techniques, but he didn't think of the gloves for himself. It was a more personal concern protecting the hands of Caroline Hampton, his chief surgical nurse, someone who would be his future wife. Halstead noticed a problem. Caroline was exposed to harsh disinfectants because of her work, and when Halstead saw her suffering from dermatitis, he wanted a solution. He commissioned the Goodyear Rubber Company to make thin rubber gloves, and now her hands were protected. But later, he saw the bigger picture. He saw their ability to fight surgical infections, even though he believed in antiseptic surgery. From here, John Hopkins started using rubber gloves in surgery. Even then, many surgeons wore them for hand protection rather than patient safety. Over time, more surgeons started loving this practice. They saw that the gloves didn't actually hinder their dexterity. Instead, it allowed for better precision in surgery. So, rubber gloves were a product of love originally. But now, it's a crucial tool in modern medicine, and we've reached more milestones since then. Disposable gloves started coming out in the 1960s, and they were a game changer. Not only were they more convenient, but they also reduced the risk of cross-contamination. These days, all hospitals use hundreds of boxes of these gloves. But now that we know why they started existing in the first place, how do we even make them? What raw materials are used? Well, most rubber gloves come from latex. No surprise here. Latex is a natural rubber harvested from the sap of rubber trees. But here's the thing. Not everyone can wear latex gloves. Some people have latex allergies. No worries though. There are alternatives like nitrile and vinyl. These synthetic materials don't have the proteins that cause latex allergies, making them a safe choice for those who need it. But no matter what the material is, making rubber gloves has several steps, and these steps have some important materials. The most common ones include natural rubber, synthetic rubber, polyvinyl chloride, PVC, and acrylonitrile butadiene, NBR. Let's take a closer look at each. Natural rubber. Like we just mentioned, natural rubber is harvested from the sap of rubber trees, it's then processed to create a material called nitrobutadiene rubber. Now, natural rubber is super elastic and durable. This obviously makes it a popular choice for gloves that need to stretch while holding up to repeated use. Synthetic rubber. Then there's synthetic rubber. This is made from polymers created through a process called polymerization. It's when different chemicals are combined to form a new material. Synthetic rubber is cool because it's more resistant to chemicals than natural rubber, a good candidate for harsher environments. Polyvinyl chloride, PVC. You also might have heard of PVC. It's a type of plastic that's flexible and durable, ideal for gloves that need to stand up to heavy use. It's also resistant to chemicals and oils. This makes PVC gloves a go-to for industrial settings where workers need to handle tough substances. Acrylonitrile butadiene, NBR. NBR is another synthetic rubber made by combining acrylonitrile and butadiene. This makes a material that's strong against oils and chemicals, ideal for gloves used in harsh environments. And then there are powder-free gloves. These don't include any powdered cornstarch, a feature that some buyers prefer. But still, latex gloves are the OGs. This makes them the go-to for medical professionals and others who need durable, comfortable gloves. They also provide a great grip, which is why they're used for tasks that require precision and longer use. And here's how we make them in factories. Step 1. Cleaning the ceramic formers. 
To get the process started, first we have to clean the ceramic formers. These are basically the molds used to shape the gloves. This step is key because it clears any leftover residue from earlier productions, making sure the gloves are clean and smooth. The formers first go through an acid tank, which dissolves any glove release agents used in previous processes. After that, they get a thorough rinse in hot water. Now they're spotless and ready for the next step. Step 2. Harvesting and Processing Natural Rubber for Latex Gloves Once we've collected the natural rubber from rubber trees, it's time to process it. This helps remove the impurities. The cleaned rubber is then turned into latex. The latex will be mixed with other materials to improve its properties like elasticity and strength. Step number 3. Calcium Salt Treatment After cleaning, the formers are dipped into a coagulant solution. This solution is usually a calcium salt mixture. Now, this step helps the latex or synthetic rubber stick evenly to the former. The smooth finish you see on the gloves? That's all thanks to this. It also contains glove release agents to make it easier to remove the finished gloves later. Step 4. Preparing the molds Before the molds are dipped into the latex mixture, they first need a cleaning. These ceramic or aluminum molds, which are shaped like hands, are dipped into hot water and then into chlorine or bleach. This step is important because it removes any leftover residue from previous productions, ensuring the gloves come out clean and smooth. Once they're fully cleaned and dried, the molds go through another dip, this time in a solution made from calcium nitrate and calcium carbonate. This coating helps the latex stick properly and makes it easier to remove the gloves from the molds later on. Step 5. Dipping into latex, or synthetic rubber. After coating the ceramic forms with coagulant, they're dipped into tanks with natural latex or synthetic rubber. The thickness of the gloves depends on how long the mold stays submerged in the mixture. And honestly, this step is oddly satisfying to watch. Step 6. Drying and leaching. After the molds are removed from the latex mixture, they spin to eliminate excess rubber or chemicals. The gloves go through partial drying in an oven. This is followed by a leaching process in hot water. We do this to remove water-soluble impurities like proteins, salts, and soap residues, especially in latex gloves. Plus, it improves durability and reduces allergens, making them safer for users prone to allergies. Step 7. Curing To strengthen the gloves and enhance their elasticity, they're cured in a hot oven for about 20 minutes. At this stage, the rubber goes through cross-linking, where sulfur and other chemicals bond the rubber molecules. This is what gives the gloves their strength and flexibility. Step number 8. Post-leaching and cornstarch powdering. After curing, the gloves are leached one more time to remove any remaining residues from the manufacturing process. The gloves are dusted with cornstarch, which absorbs moisture and keeps them from sticking together. Cornstarch also makes it easier to put the gloves on and take them off while being gentle on the skin. Step 9. Stripping. Once the gloves are fully formed and powdered, they're carefully stripped off the ceramic formers. We can do this in two ways, either by blowing air between the gloves and the former or using an automated stripping machine. But we need to do it. It helps maintain the integrity of the gloves as they're removed from the molds. Step 10. Tumbling. The gloves are placed in large tumblers, like industrial dryers, that remove extra powder and finish the curing process. This process ensures that the gloves are fully set and ready for use, enhancing their overall quality and texture. Step 11. Packing. The gloves are then counted by weight and packed into boxes, ready for shipment. Each box contains the correct number of gloves, carefully sealed to protect them from contaminants. Step 12. Quality Control. Before these gloves make it to you, they have to go through strict testing to guarantee they're up to the task. It's not just a quick look over either. Each batch goes through a full range of inspections to catch any issues that might slip by. So, what do they check for? It all starts with a detailed visual inspection for any signs of trouble, like tiny holes, tears, or odd spots. Then comes the watertight test, making sure each glove is waterproof and ready to protect. Only gloves that pass each check get the green light for packing and shipping. But these tests aren't easy to pass. 
they have to meet international standards. In the US, the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, sets the safety standards for medical gloves and they mean business. Every glove is tested for things like puncture resistance, tensile strength, and biocompatibility. The FDA's acceptable quality level, or AQL, allows for a very slim margin. Just 1.5% to 2.5% of gloves can have tiny defects. If more than that fail, the whole batch is out. For sterilized surgical gloves, the FDA's rules are even tougher. You don't have room for error with an AQL of only 1 to 1.5%. This basically means almost all sterile gloves must be flawless. When it comes to leaks, medical gloves go through two stages of testing to make sure no holes are letting in air or liquid. The first phase is an air test, basically blowing up each glove like a balloon. This makes any tiny holes easy to spot. Then comes the water test, where gloves are filled with water and checked over for two full minutes. Not a single drop should get through. Only gloves that pass both tests move on to the next stage. First, there's a dimension test to ensure each glove hits specific measurements for length, width, and thickness. These requirements depend on factors like glove size and type, but the goal is always the same, consistency and safety. If a glove's labeled as sterile, it has to undergo a specialized sterility test. Gloves are also heated to between 70 and 100 degrees Celsius to make sure they stay strong and hold up under stress. If the glove has a powder coating, that's standardized too. Powder coating makes it easier to put on and take off, so the amount of powder stays under 2 milligrams per glove. Latex gloves also need one more test for antigenic protein content. This helps avoid reactions for people with latex allergies. Beyond the US, other standards are in place to ensure glove quality and safety. And there are specific organizations that keep a check. For example, the International Organization for Standardization has guidelines for quality. Meeting these high standards is essential. It's how manufacturers make sure you're getting a safe, high quality product you can rely on. Once every glove has made it through all these steps and passes, it's finally ready for packaging and shipping. So next time you put on a pair of gloves, remember everything that went into making them reliable. Give those gloves a little extra appreciation for keeping you safe especially since they're so versatile. And almost every industry uses rubber gloves, so picking the right glove for the right job is important. Doesn't matter if they're made from natural or synthetic rubber, they're used everywhere, and every glove offers something a little different. But the one thing you'll always get with rubber gloves? Durability. Rubber gloves have high tensile strength. This means that they can withstand a good amount of stretching and pulling without tearing which obviously makes them perfect for tasks requiring fine motor skills, like handling small objects or doing some detailed work. Plus, when we think of rubber gloves, we think of flexibility, especially natural latex gloves. Rubber's natural elasticity allows these gloves to stretch and mold to your hand. So if you need to wear them for a hot minute and want to be comfortable, natural rubber is the way to go. But be careful. Over time, exposure to heat or certain chemicals can reduce their flexibility. Rubber gloves are also go-tos for their chemical resistance. That's why they're used across industries where dealing with harsh chemicals is just part of the job. Rubber can stand up to a lot of chemicals, like fuels and solvents, that would wear down other materials fast. But here's the catch. No glove material can block every chemical out there, so you've got to pick the right glove for the right job. And just like there are different glove materials, there are also options for thickness, each one suited for different tasks. Thicker gloves, they're all about durability and handling rougher work, giving you solid protection against punctures and abrasions. But if flexibility is what you need, thinner gloves are your friend. They're ideal for those delicate tasks where you need to feel what you're doing, even if they might tear more easily. So, when picking gloves, getting the right thickness can be the trick to balancing protection with comfort for whatever is at hand. Pun intended. Now let's shift our focus to another important aspect. The future of rubber gloves. These days, it's all about being green. Rubber gloves aren't good for the environment, and people have started noticing that. It's become clear that we need to be sustainable, especially in harvesting rubber from trees. 
These trees are key to protecting biodiversity and keeping our ecosystems healthy. That's why many manufacturers are stepping up and adopting eco-friendly methods. They're sourcing latex from sustainably managed plantations. And they're even finding ways to cut down on waste during production. On top of that, we're seeing this awesome new trend of biodegradable products. And gloves aren't any different. They're made of natural material and provide a solid alternative to traditional rubber gloves. So you have gloves and are helping tackle the pollution problem caused by disposable products. As more consumers become aware of environmental issues, the demand for sustainable options is likely to rise. The rubber glove industry will have to up their game. And that's all from us. If you're curious about how other everyday items are manufactured, be sure to like and subscribe for more breakdowns. Till next time, thanks for watching.